Hello all you Pixel people, I am Pixel and welcome back to part 5 of the Project Spark tutorial series. Where we left off we had created these torches which I'll quickly show you now just in case you've forgotten about it or in case you didn't see it. So we created this torch and we also made it so that we could save these as an assembly and use them again and again and that's how we decided to add these extra ones in over here. Now that's cool, we've got some nice stable torches which we can still modify, change and all that kind of good jazz. But the issue that we have is that in general the world is still very dark. And the way we're going to get around this, like, like if we go over here you can see the light from the torches doesn't spread that very far. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a torch to our first person camera. So basically it looks like we are holding a torch. This is actually really quite simple, but it's kind of hard to line up and get right because there's a few really easy mistakes that you can make, which we're going to go into now. We're just going to jump straight into this and get it done. So, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's a little bit sore today. Um, so our character's here. Let's move him along by selecting the prop tool. We'll just drag him away from this, just so I don't want him too close to any other items which we may keep misclicking by accident. And we'll come in nice and close. So what we want to do is add a torch and I'm going to show you a couple of issues with this so we click on the character and then we've got this little suit of armor icon at the bottom if we click this we can do the character studio in which we go to attachments and we go to add new and we're just going to search torch and select the woodman torch and where would you normally put it like this is where the mistake happens for first person view You'd normally say we'll put it in his right hand, right? That makes sense. So we click right hand. It's it's a little bit big. Ignore that. That's not the main issue that we've got here. Um, but I'm just going to show you quickly what the issue with putting it in his right hand is. So we play. And it's in his right hand. It's just down here. And when we're walking, it's in our face and clipping through. And when we're sprinting, it's... Well, it, it's going everywhere, basically. We we jump and it does strange movements. And it's just not that ideal. Um, the reason for this is because the character's movement and animation wasn't set up for a first-person camera. You, you have to really design for that when you're designing a game. And because we don't have the option to actually have first-person animations, hopefully they could actually implement something like this in the final build. But because we can't actually just do it that simply, what we're going to have to do instead is a little bit of a trick. So, yeah, we're going to have to delete this, I'm afraid. So we click on him again, and we go to the attachment thing. Attachments, add new, torch again. And where we're going to actually attach this is his head, surprisingly enough. And it's going to look odd. I mean, it's literally balancing on his head. And obviously, we, we can't play like that because it'd be out of our view. So what we do now is we actually just, like, use the arrows to actually move it like you move any other prop. And actually get it into a decent position. And this is where you may be surprised. It's actually a lot further forward than what you might expect. So, let's just test it here. This is right in our center of our vision. It's not what we were going to want in the final thing. But So we go back. We go back again. And we click play. So we've started, we've got a floating torch in front of us, which stays tracked to our head. As you can see, that's why it even moves a little bit. It, it's kind of free in, in a respect. So what we're going to do is, first off, this is something that you'd normally do later, but I'm going to do it now just so we get it out of the way. We're going to scale it down a little bit. It was a little bit large. I'd probably say about 70 or 80% because it's actually quite a long way in front of us, so it will seem smaller. And what we're going to do is we're going to line it up. So we've got the front of his face. He wants it further to this side. And our camera is actually a little bit lower down than what you'd expect. So we're going to lower this a fair bit. Now this seems odd. It doesn't seem right at all. But when we test it, it's getting there. See, look, when we're walking especially, it's slowly getting there. Problem is, we're always going to have this issue where if we look down, it's going to be floating. And there's nothing really we can do about that other than adding uh, an arm. And I don't think there's an actual easy way of doing that. So, we're getting there. We're going to pull it out a little bit. F oh, that just moved a little bit, didn't it? We're going to pull it out a little bit further away. And just to add a bit of an effect, we're going to rotate it away from us. 
because you would normally hold it like this. And we're going to rotate it inwards a little bit to get a bit of a nice angle. And now we'll test it again. This is just really trial and error till we actually get it right. See, where it is now, it's not too bad. I still want to get it more to the right and a little bit further down. It's still taking up a little bit too much of our screen. It's not a massive issue, but you got to remember when it's actually turned on, there's flames coming off it. That's going to totally block our vision, which we don't want. So we're going to move it further left, further right, should I say, and further forward. Come on, just let me do this. And a little bit further down. See, this looks really odd now. That's where our vision is going to be seeing it. I'm assuming the camera comes right out of this guy's chest and not his head. But we click play again. See, I can get used to that. I'm, I'm thinking that's not too bad. And because we sorted out the walking in the first, in the second episode, like sorting out the timing, it looks like he's walking. He's got a bit of a limp. But it doesn't look too bad. And when we move, it moves a little bit. When we jump, we've still got it in our view. When we're sprinting, it's a little bit lower down. So maybe I ha I raise it up a tiny little bit. Which we can do quite easily. Let's wait till he lines up his own head. Unfortunately, the characters still move while in this editing mode. And it can mess up the animation a little bit. Right, well, let's do it there. Out a little bit. And further out that way a little bit. And let's lean it a tiny little bit in woods again. I'm thinking that this may be the one. I'm liking that. I, I think we've set up the torch in a decent position. And because we're not going to have the torch turning on and off, and the reasons for this, again, is limitations within the actual Project Spark game engine, that we can't, we don't have a built-in animation to turn off the torch. It's either on or off. And that would look really odd, just like literally pressing a button, it gone. The, the, there's no in-between. So we're going to have it left on at all times, apart from we can get rid of it at certain times, say like if we jump in water or something like that. So now we've got it set up. Obviously, it's still floating, like I said, but hopefully you won't be looking at your feet too much. But uh, we're going to turn on the torch. And the way we do that is quite simply like we did with these torches. We just click on this torch now. And we click on the mechanic, well, the gear icon, go to properties, brain, and then we've got power on. And test. That should have worked. That should have worked. Okay, something's not right here, guys. I can't think of any reason why that would not have worked. Brain. Power off. On. Let's turn off the brain just in case that was something to do with it. It must have been the brain. That's strange. Um, well, if anybody from the community watches this and have, has got experience in why that may have been the case, I would love to hear that. But, uh... I've never had that problem before throughout all my tests, but I'm assuming it's a little bit of a bug. But anyway, we've got this this torch up now. And it, it's not perfect, like I mentioned it wouldn't be, but it's working. Apart from it's only visibly working, it's not actually emitting any light. If we go into this dark area under here, you'll see that we're not actually lighting anything up. And the reason for that is we have yet to attach a light, just like we did with the original torches in the previous episode. And what we're going to do for this is actually click on the torch. And click on the attachments tool. Attachments. And then add new. And we're going to put light. Light bulb. And we're just going to put it on the... Let's put it in the center. And then we'll line it up a bit. So we're going to scale this down just so we can see where about... It. Oh, that wasn't a bad location. Um, we're still going to move it a tiny little bit. Just because I want it to not be exactly where the torch is. I want it to be a little bit further away to get some extra range without actually modifying too much. Okay, so we're in a decent position now, but obviously it's still the light which we don't really want. And the way we're going to do that is again, clicking on the gear icon, we're going to set up the light exactly the same as we did with the other torches. So, we go to properties, appearance, light. Again, we've got stable, and then we turn it to flickering, and we're going to 
Turn the intense seal to 1.33. That was just a pot guess. I'm just thinking that's about right. We can tweak all this before the very end. This is just making sure we've got something working before we actually start spending time doing anything else. And these torches are 7.5. We're going to put this onto 5. This is a very small light. I think we'll test it and see how it goes. Again, we're going to change the color to an orangey kind of flame color. Click OK. And now, when we click play, again, that should be working. Bang. So, yeah, we can see we've got a little bit of light. It's not a lot of light at all, but it should appear a little bit more in a dark area. So, as you can see, we've still got a little bit of light showing. And there we go. We've got a decent working torch. I'm thinking the range should be a little bit bigger. But it really depends. I'm just going to have a quick walk around to see where it starts feeling right. Is there a really dark area somewhere? Like, this is quite dark. This is actually really quite dark. So It's lighting up the tree here. And don't forget, we are going to darken the actual overall world again later on. Actually, that, this will be a good time to actually try that. So we're going to go to edit. And then we're going to come to this. World settings, and we've got our brightness at zero, but we're actually going to drop this down to minus three, so it's a very dark night. Pitch black, almost. And test it again. So look how dark it is, and we can see that our torch is actually making a little bit of a difference. Like, you can hardly even see that there's a tunnel here anymore. We walk through. You see the shadows of the creatures moving. Crazy squirrels, crazy. Okay, I'm thinking we're actually going to increase the range a tiny little bit, to be fair. And we'll do this by, again, properties, appearance, light. Let's actually put it up to 12. So that's a big jump. That's almost double the range. So now when we go down, oh, you can see we're getting a lot more light already. An awful lot more light. We're already lighting up the tunnel. The tunnel's going to appear almost fully lit. Maybe this is a little bit too much. Again, we'll go over to these dark trees over here just to see where we start lighting them up. When do we actually get some texture on that tree? So we're actually starting to light about here. That's, that's a very far distance. Maybe... Maybe 7.5 again, maybe 10. I'm thinking maybe 10 to be fair. But yeah, there we go guys, we've got a working torch. Already, that wasn't very long or arduous at all, and it's a very short episode. Um, let's just change this one more time. Light. Down to 9. We'll do 9 for safety. And let's decrease the intensity. And then again, we run. I'll tell you what we're going to do in the next episode. Next episode, we are going to focus on tweaking this sprint a little bit, making it last a little bit longer, and just getting like the timing right on. Because after doing some testing, like if I want to run up to this hill, like I've got to walk at this speed, and if I sprint, the sprint runs out pretty fast. So I'm thinking if we can like triple the length of the sprint, but maybe tweak the speed settings a little bit, maybe make you walk a tiny bit slower and sprint a tiny bit faster to make a bigger difference. And we're also going to work on editing the sprint functionality so that if you let it go to zero at any point, you're going to have to wait for it to raise up to 50% before you can use it again. And this is interesting because it'll mean that even when you're being panicked, if you're being chased by something in the final game, you're going to have to really think about, do I want to sprint or do I want to do something or something else? And then on an episode after that, we're going to look at a blinking eye function, which is going to be quite cool because we're going to add a sanity meter in. I've started to come up with some ideas of how this game's going to work. And uh, just picture this for an idea. You've got to blink while you're walking. Because if you don't blink, your sanity will go crazy and you'll start hallucinating certain enemies and stuff, which can cause damage. So you keep blinking. But when you blink or you 
yeah, you blink time goes over a certain amount. You'll close your eyes when you open them, you'll be in a different location, you'll feel a bit confused. I think that'll be really crazy. Really, really kind of crazy. So it's something that I want to experiment with. I've not tested it yet. And I will more than likely test that straight away in a tutorial because it's something that I want to try and I don't want to just say, no, I'm not going to do it because it doesn't work. We're going to learn an awful lot through trial and error while trying this out. So anyway, guys, I hope that this has helped you get your first person camera with a torch set up. I have looked at creating a beam torch, kind of like in Slender. However, it's not working all that great because... All we can do is a light bulb. There is no spotlight to there's no spotlight light at the moment. Hopefully later on down the line they may add something like this. And all the tests that I've done to try and emulate a normal light haven't come across perfect yet. Yet. I may be able to work something out in future, but uh yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to slap that subscribe button for some more PC gaming goodness and to like this video. If you like this video. And yes, we can see the dark side of my cave. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.